It's me, Peyton. I am going to be like every YouTuber ever, and I'm going to make a vlog. Uh -huh. We're going to Yellowstone right now, and how much longer do we have? Like, four hours? Okay, yeah, four more hours. And, yeah, it's a really pretty drive, though. I'm happy. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited to have you. And if you're returning, thanks for coming back. I'm so excited to see you again. On Tuesdays, we talk about a true crime story, which is today. Hopefully this goes up on Tuesday. It might go up on Wednesday, but I'm really hoping for Tuesday, latest Tuesday evening. But I do share a true crime story every Tuesday. And then on Saturdays, I try to do something like strange history or paranormal or conspiracy theory um, that might not go up every Saturday. It just depending on my schedule because I do still work full time. But if that is something that you are interested in, you can go ahead and hit the little subscribe button down below and so you can follow along. And if you're interested, you can also hit the bell icon and then be notified when I upload. Um, only if you're interested, no pressure. I do want to give a quick warning that some of the things that we talk about here can be pretty heavy. So if that is something your mental health cannot handle, go ahead and click off this video and I will catch you somewhere else, but your mental health will always be so much more important than any YouTube video ever will be. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and dive into today's story. Today, we're going to be talking about Nadia and Peyton Medley. Nadia and Peyton were the absolute best of friends. They had the like cutest mother-daughter relationship. Nadia was actually born in Germany, but she moved to Utah when she was younger. And that's where she met her first husband, whose name was Tom Medley. They had Peyton together, and unfortunately, Tom would die in 2014 due to a heart attack. Nadia and Tom had a pet store together that they had had while Tom was still alive, but after he passed away, Nadia had to sell the pet store and move on to something else. That's when she became a massage therapist. Nadia and Peyton were just so cute together. They had such an amazing relationship and Peyton was actually an aspiring YouTuber. She had a YouTube channel that she enjoyed posting on and she would often have her mother on it. But the death of Tom had was something that was very difficult for Nadia and Peyton, and um, they had to end up, you know, selling the pet store, like I said. And this was really hard for them because they, Peyton and Nadia were both huge animal lovers. If it had fur of any kind, they were in love. But Nadia still had to provide for Peyton, and this was pretty difficult after Tom died. She ended up getting her massage therapist license. She ended up opening her own massage therapy uh, business, and that is where she met her newest love, Mike Bullinger. Nadia was 47 when she met Mike and he was 60 years old. Mike was a pilot. He would fly uh, private jets around the country. So this meant that he would often leave town for weeks on end, but Nadia and Mike just really seemed to hit it off. Mike let Nadia know that he had been divorced for several years and this was actually the first time he was interested in someone. This was the first time he had tried to pursue someone after his divorce. But by 2015, Mike and Nadia were kind of falling in love with each other. They really enjoyed each other's company and Mike enjoyed spending time with not only Nadia but with Peyton as well. Peyton and Mike became very fast friends and it soon turned into much more of a father-daughter relationship. In fact, Peyton quickly started calling Mike dad and they just really blossomed. The, or their relationship just really blossomed really quickly. Peyton was a very bright and loving girl. She just had her whole life ahead of her and it was just such a bright future for her. And Nadia and Mike really celebrated all of her wins. Nadia's Facebook page, Nadia was very active on social media and her Facebook page is actually still up. You can go look at it. And it was quite, um, 
it's quite a beautiful page because she is just so dedicated to her daughter and celebrating her every move. And anytime Peyton would post on YouTube, Nadia would share that on her Facebook page and just encourage everyone to uh, subscribe and share and like it. And I just, I really look at their relationship. It was such a close relationship and they loved each other so much. It was just a really beautiful relationship. But Nadia did struggle to make ends meet a lot of times and Mike was very well off. He was a private pilot after all. And uh, Nadia had told her friends that she had seen some of Mike's um, paychecks and Mike made about $10,000 a month. That's a significant amount of money. And there were a couple of times where Nadia had asked Mike to help her pay the mortgage. Mike said no. Um, and the third time that Nadia asked, Mike said that this was going way too fast for him and he was not comfortable with how quickly their relationship was, was progressing. It was after the third time that Nadia had asked Mike to help pay the mortgage that Mike decided they needed a separation in the relationship. Nadia and Mike still talked during this separation and it seemed like it just wasn't what the couple wanted. They didn't want the separation. They didn't want to stop seeing each other. And so this separation didn't last very long and soon they were back together and um, living their best life. They would go to baseball games together, rodeos together. Um, they took an impromptu trip to Yellowstone together. Mike just really seemed to spoil both Nadia and Peyton. And Nadia posted him all over Facebook. She was so very in love with Mike and she enjoyed sharing all of their memories on Facebook. And uh, Nadia's friend said that Nadia really seemed happy. This was the first time she had seemed happy for a very long time. It didn't take long for Mike to ask Nadia to move in with him. When they first met, they were living in Ogden, Utah. Mike said he had bought a small ranch in Caldwell, Idaho. This was about four hours away from Ogden and he asked Nadia and Peyton to move in with him. This was a uh, nice ranch with some land and a cute little house on it that they were that they would be able to put horses on and just all the animals that Nadia and Peyton wanted. So this was going to be a really great move and Nadia announced this on Facebook saying that she was, uh, she had agreed to move in with Mike um, and it was just a matter of time before they would. It would take a couple of months because Nadia and Peyton needed to settle some of their things back in Ogden and, but they were going to pack up and move to Caldwell, Idaho with Mike very quickly. This wasn't like a uh, very quick move. Nadia and Mike had been dating for two years at this point. It wasn't like a really fast relationship or anything like that. They had been seeing each other for a while, so moving in was just kind of the next step and moving into a place where they could have all the animals that they wanted together seemed like a dream come true to Nadia. And by the time May of 2017 rolled around, Nadia and Peyton had packed up and moved to Idaho. They had left their horses back in Ogden because there was some things that needed to be done to the property in Idaho before the horses could come live with them there. This was like they needed to build some fences. They just needed to clean up the place a little bit before they would be able to put these horses on the property. But as soon as they got to Idaho, Nadia posted a video to Facebook showing off the property and letting everyone kind of see the place and see where they were going to be living. Well, folks, here's my new backyard. Kind of liking this just a little bit. Still a little bit of fence to build here. <laughs> Actually a lot. Dogs are the only thing that's grazing now, but that will change. This is where the chickens live. Hay shed. I can't even see the house because of all the trees. Yeah, baby. We're loving it. They had plans to have horses and chickens and they were just going to do the whole homesteading life and Nadia was so excited about this and you can tell by all of her Facebook posts. Nadia had left her horses with a few of her friends back in Ogden and in June of 2017, Nadia had planned to go and get those horses. 
but she never showed up to this. In fact, nobody was able to get a hold of Nadia, Peyton, or Mike. This was pretty unusual because Nadia was very active on Facebook and Peyton was, you know, a typical teenager. She liked to have her phone on her all the time. So when friends back in Ogden were unable to get a hold of Peyton or Nadia, they thought that this was very strange. Something was obviously very wrong. So friends back in Ogden called the Caldwell Police Department and asked them to do a welfare check on Nadia, Mike, and Peyton. Mike's family was also unable to get a hold of him and this was very unusual, so they all wanted a welfare check to be done on the family. June 19th of 2017 is when police arrived to the property in Caldwell, Idaho. As soon as the police officer made his entrance onto the property, he could smell something very foul and he knew where this was going as you probably do too. The smell on the property would get a whole lot worse as he moved towards the back of the property and he said that there was just this ominous feeling on the property. When he got to a shed that you can see in one of Nadia's videos, she was planning on turning that into the chicken coop. But when he got to this shed, he the uh, flies were so much worse and he could just smell the death all around him. He walked into the chicken coop and that's where he saw a blue tarp. Under this blue tarp, there were three bodies. It would be assumed that the bodies would be of Nadia, Peyton, and Mike, but the bodies had decomposed much quickly since it was the middle of summer and it was really hot out during that time. So decomposition had happened much quicker than, you know, if it had been in the middle of December. But they were able to find out that all three of the victims had died of a single gunshot wound, but when the results came back, it was Nadia and it was Peyton, but the third body was the body of a woman named Cheryl Baker. And this was really strange because Cheryl had absolutely zero ties to Nadia and Peyton at all. We'll go a little deeper into Cheryl in just a second, but a few other things that police found on the property. There were several pets that had been in the shed as well, and they had also been shot and killed. And there were a couple of other pets that were locked inside the house, but they had died due to nobody taking care of them. And on top of this, Mike was nowhere to be found. So like I said, Nadia and Peyton had zero ties to Cheryl Baker whatsoever. The only thing that they could kind of come close to was that Cheryl Baker also lived in Ogden, Utah, and she didn't live very far away from where Nadia and Peyton did. Cheryl was a retired teacher and soon they found out that Cheryl was actually married to a man named Gerald Michael Bullinger or Mike Bullinger. Cheryl was 56 years old and she had been married to Mike since 2010. Overall, Cheryl and Mike seemed really happy. All of their friends and family never thought that there was anything amiss in the relationship and they just really seemed to enjoy each other's company and it seemed to be a very healthy relationship. But Cheryl wanted to retire and just kind of enjoy her time after working as hard as she had all her life. The property that Mike, Nadia, and Peyton were living on was actually bought by Cheryl. Mike had convinced Cheryl to buy this property as their retirement and he told her that he was going to go up before her and get it ready so that they could move in while she stayed back in Ogden and sold their house and tied up all the loose ends there. Then they were both going to move into this house together and live out their retirement. But Mike was unable to get this property. It was actually Cheryl who had to buy this property all by herself. Mike wasn't on the property at all. Cheryl had absolutely no idea that Mike had been cheating on her for two years with Nadia, which I'm not entirely sure how Mike was able to get this done since Nadia pub like posted him so publicly for two whole years. You would think that living in like in the same city that there would be some kind of connection that one of Cheryl's friends would have seen that Nadia was posting about her boyfriend, Mike. But for two years, Mike was able to keep this relationship a secret as well as the secret that he was actually married. So at this point, Mike is the main suspect. Like who else could it be? Police don't know exactly what happened the night of the murder but it seems like Cheryl was at home kind of 
she had just retired on June 6th and she was at home and trying to get everything ready so that they could move to this property in Idaho and decided to make an impromptu trip to the new ranch to see it, check it out and check in with Mike to see how everything was going. Cheryl did text one of her friends on her way there saying that she didn't know if she would be back. So maybe she kind of had a suspicion that something was going on at this point, but no one is entirely sure. Either way, somehow after Cheryl made it to the property, she must have seen that there was an entire family living on her property and uh, it must have just blown up in Mike's face and somehow he was able to overpower all three women and murder them all. The bodies were found on June 19th and it is believed that the murders occurred on either June 8th or June 9th. Police also believe that Mike stayed the night in the house after he committed the murders. And then on June 10th, Mike is seen at a local spot having breakfast like it's a normal day. Then again, on June 10th, he makes the trip back to Ogden where he is seen by his neighbors. And he even asks his neighbors, hey, have you seen Cheryl? Cause I haven't seen her kind of almost making it seem like maybe at first he had planned on making it look like Cheryl had been murdered by somebody else or trying to set up an alibi of some kind, I'm not sure. But the entire time that he is seen in Ogden, he was driving his own pickup. He then went to the place where Cheryl's car was being serviced, which was a white Ford Focus. He got into that car and then he started driving, making his escape. Mike starts driving and then he is seen on June 11th, entering into the Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. So it's important to note that the Grand Teton National Park is a very, remote, large national park. It is very easy to get lost in these parks, in, in any national park in America, really. It is so easy to get lost in these parks and never be seen again. There were a few witnesses that would see Mike a couple of um, days in a row at the Grand Teton National Park, but all of the witnesses said that Mike was not prepared. He was not wearing the clothes that he needed to be making a very long hike. He didn't have water. He didn't have food. He was not prepared to have this like long hiking adventure in the park. But even though he was not prepared, Mike has never been seen again. There have been searches done by foot and by air, and there has been not a trace of Mike anywhere. Cheryl's car was found on July 12th of 2017 in a very remote area, and the park workers said that that car had been there for a significant amount of time. It seems like most people believe that Mike actually died due to exposure while in the park and his remains just haven't been found. Investigators were thinking that when the animals became more active, eventually they would find evidence that Mike had died in the park, but nothing like that has come out at all. There are a small group of people who believe that Mike um, actually took his own life while he was in the park. But this theory, I kind of have a hard time believing because uh, Cheryl was not Mike's first wife. She was his third wife. So Mike's previous wives have come out and said that Mike was an absolute sociopath, that he was just a vindictive, evil person. He was just mean and just horrible to get along with. They genuinely do not believe that he would take his own life because he was just so evil and he just, evil people don't do that kind of thing. And so they really don't believe that Mike would have taken his own life. There is another group of people that believe that Mike found another exit from the park and has since made his way out of the Grand uh, Teton National Park and has started his life over again with a new identity and is just uh, out living it up somewhere, possibly having found another woman to manipulate and to live off of. And that's what some people believe. My own personal belief is that Mike was an outdoorsman. He really enjoyed the outdoors. He enjoyed hiking. He he knew how to hike long treks. He knew how to camp. Like he was just really into the outdoors. So I kind of believe that he might still be out there. I know that's kind of far-fetched because there has just been absolutely no trace of him ever since, but he was such an outdoorsman. I just cannot see him just dying 
to exposure. I feel like he's resourceful and he could have survived out there. A lot of people do. And in order to commit a crime like this, you have to be a sociopath and I agree. People like that do not take their own lives. Narcissists would never do that. They think they're too great that this world has to have them. So I don't know, I kind of do lean on the uh, theory that he might still be out there, which is an absolutely terrifying thought. And that's why it's so important to circulate his picture because um, I saw someone else talk about this because who knows who has seen him if he is still alive. But what are your thoughts? Do you think that Mike died due to exposure? Do you think that he's still out there? Do you think he's found someone else to manipulate and has a brand new identity somewhere? I would love to know your thoughts. So if you want to, you can leave them down in the comments below. But that's pretty much all I have for you today. Uh, just let me know your thoughts. I would love to have a discussion down there. And uh, yeah, I am sending you so much love and I hope you are doing so well and I will see you next week. Bye.